Picture this. You're dribbling the ball down the field. Uh, you're on a nice little counterattack. And it occurs to you that the defense is kind of out of position. You realize now would be the perfect time to pull out a nasty flick. This moment is what you practice for. Now is your time. You hold your breath. Timing is everything. Out of nowhere, a foreign object that you had not accounted for comes screaming from behind into your vision, absolutely crushing the ball down the field into the waiting bumpers of the defense, where they then prepare their counterattack on you. If this has happened to you before, then you've already experienced one of the five worst play styles in Rocket League that we're about to cover. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the playstyle in that first scenario we talked about. This is the easiest one to put in this video because it's the one that people complain about the most. Now, just because it's the most obvious doesn't mean it's the worst though. Just trust me, we'll, we'll cover some worse ones. The first one is the way over aggressive, classic ball chaser guy that's only going for solo dribbles. Like the thought of a pass doesn't even occur to him. That's not even really in his like book of plays, you know, like there's, there's only one thing and that's taking on the entire opposing team by himself. But you have to feel for this guy, because you know he's been through hell. I mean, these are the eyes of a player that has fallen to a rank that he thinks he does not deserve, and must single-handedly climb back up to the rank that the Rocket League god has destined for him. Because one of the biggest motivators of a player like this is they think that their teammates are not good enough for them, and that they have to be the ones to win this game because they used to be at a higher rank. He's just shouldering the entire weight of the team and attempting to carry. Unfortunately, the higher ranked you are in Rocket League, the less of a viable strategy this is. There's a chance this also comes from a player that's transitioning to a higher rank and he's trying to play a little faster. Unfortunately, playing faster just means blindly careening his car after the ball. So if you look into this guy's mind, we can see why his uh, teammates aren't really uh, part of the mix in there. But, uh, I mean, he's playing fast. You have to give him that. Let's move on to number two. Number two is actually the exact opposite, and I actually find it much worse. A ball chaser, I know what to expect, and I can just hang back. But this play style just leaves you to fend for yourself out there. I'm, of course, referring to the player that just stays way back out of the play. So far back that they basically say, okay, you attack. I'll just sit back in net and actually contribute nothing to the game. The worst part about this playstyle is it's a really ineffective way to defend. Because guess what happens when your pass attempt falls to nobody because they're back on defense. The defense now has a counter, usually a 2v1, and uh, this type of space is an offensive player's dream. I'd say 80% of the time, this player is going to get flicked. Not only that, it's almost impossible to maintain offensive pressure when you're leaving your teammate to deal with a 2v1 on offense. This comes, of course, as a reaction to trying not to be a ball chaser, maybe, or maybe just having a couple bad games where you got scored on a lot and you're like, all right, I'm just gonna stay back. But as we see, it uh, does not work. Number three is the level of aggression is right, but just trying to pass way too much. Now you might be thinking, what's wrong with passing? Like, that's great. And it is, but you can't just pass every time you have the ball. There's sometimes where you just have to take the ball to goal. He's always looking for an opportunity even when it's not there. He's the one that's just gonna loft the ball over the middle of the field after like fiddling with it for 10 seconds so the defense has plenty of time to read it. Not gonna lie, this is probably the one I identify with the most because I love passes so much. I look for them when they're not there or the defense will easily read them. The signature move of the guy that passes way too much is he goes for a back pass when a defender is like hot on his trail and uh, he gives the ball essentially to to his opponent and then leaves his teammate uh, to sort of fend for himself. But hey, uh, at least he tried to share the ball. Number four is the rotation cutter. You might say that sounds a lot like the way over aggressive ball chaser, but it's actually a little different because the rotation cutter isn't necessarily trying to get to the ball first. He just doesn't understand how to rotate behind the next player. Now this could be because the player he is cutting in the rotation is not fast enough to get out on the ball, and so he feels he needs to cut. But the worst type of rotation cutter is the one that cuts the rotation 
seemingly out of necessity for speed for getting to the ball quicker, but then proceeds to not go after the ball. In other words, cutting it and then stopping, leaving two of you sitting in net and eventually, usually, watching the ball sail over your heads into the goal. As you can see, this is a very frustrating maneuver and probably one of the worst play styles in Rocket League. Number five is one that's sure to piss off my friend Rocket Sledge. He's sort of the champion of this playstyle. I think he does it well enough that it works for him. It's the only going for demos player. This guy is just so out for blood. He's not even thinking about the ball. He's not thinking about his teammates. He's thinking about one thing, and that's getting enough boost to crush his opponents to smithereens. He revels in the salt in the chat after he demos somebody. In fact, that actually makes his bloodlust stronger. If you respond to a demo from this guy, you're just giving him fuel. Like, this guy only wants to kill. This is the guy that wouldn't have played Rocket League like he preferred shooters, but then he realized you could still kill people and utilize that part of his game to a like obscene level. This guy is frustrating to play with because he's always out of position because all he can think about is uh, destroying the other team. So he'll go way upfield even when you're defending so he can get enough boost to just find someone to run into. And for obvious reasons, this is also frustrating to play against. But it's pretty easy to counter uh, since you're able to catch this demo crit raised fiend out of position and usually you can score on them pretty easily because again they're just not in position to defend they're in position to kill so there's five of the worst play styles in rocket league i'm sure we've all at one point embodied those five play styles so this isn't to point fingers this is just to look at ourselves and recognize these five terrible play styles that I'm sure we've all either ran into or used ourselves. So let's do each other a favor as Rocket League players and just uh, stop. Ooh.